Okay guys, so I made this little animation right here yesterday and I decided I want to share some thoughts about it with you guys. The purpose of this was to find a good way to plan complicated shot sequences and create a blocky rough animatic that I could use later on while working on the final backgrounds and cleaning up the animation. Or send it to a team that would take care about it. It's really important for me to be able to analyze the sequence in terms of the most challenging parts of the animation, the amount of the backgrounds that has to be created, the way that final compositing would be, would be done. In other words, the more precise the animatic would be, the safer I would feel while cleaning up all the stuff. So, where do I start? The idea was to move this dude from here and let him disappear in here, in some interesting way. The very first thing I created looked more or less like this. This is the path of my character. Then I blocked the 3D animation. I'm not a great 3D animator. I prefer to draw, but I know how to use default Rigify Rig in Blender. But you can use whatever you like. Personally, I think that using too detailed 3D model for reference might kill the final 2D vibe at the end. So usually I use this little guy here. It's a kind of a 3D stick man made with rigged grease pencil. It's great to set up the proportions of the character and it helps to maintain them during the 2D animation process. I started with posing him in key poses, like this and this. Then I added some more important keys by using the breakdowner and modifying the poses. For example, I wanted to establish the amount of steps that he would need to do going from here to here. When I was happy with timing and spacing of this blocky animation, I started to work with my camera. So the first thing I did was changing the camera interpolation method from Bezier to constant. Then, according to existing animation, I added some more camera angles and positions. And by the way, I keyframed the focal length of the camera in the same way, so I could tweak the camera position, angle and focal distance in the dope sheet editor. That way, I created a series of static shots. I could still play around with timing since everything here is in 3D and quite easy to manipulate and tweak. Now, I needed to think about the composition of the shots, so I added some pretty simple 3D meshes to fill the space with something interesting. Finally, I added some grease pencil clouds and came back to fixing the camera angles. I decided that I need my camera to move from time to time, so for example, I copied the initial camera keyframe and moved it to the end of the shot, then I modified the position and rotation, and I changed the interpolation method to linear and I had a moving camera in my first shot. Now for the hand-drawn part. First, I created a new grease pencil object. I changed the drawing plane from view to side, which worked better for me than the front in this particular shot, and I created the character outline using my 3D grease pencil skeleton as a reference. When I moved to another shot, I changed the position of the grease pencil object to fit it better into the situation. Don't forget to change the interpolation of the object animation to constant, otherwise it would move, which we don't want in this particular case. Same thing for another shot and another, until the end. One last thing was to make uh, the whole scene a little bit more appealing, so I decided to create a whole new grease pencil object, set it to surface painting mode and draw some stuff around. I added an animated filter I created in Blender some time ago and rendered it out as an image sequence. Finally, I tweaked the colors and contrast a little bit with the color balance node. And yeah, I was done. The cool part is that while moving to the next parts of the process, creation of actual backgrounds, cleaning up the animation and filling it with in-betweens, you can still use all the cool stuff from the animatic. Like you can actually attach stuff to the existing 3D rig or use 3D meshes for further surface painting. So yeah, it's kind of cool. So that's pretty much it. Hope it was helpful and see you next time.